Hi everyone. I thought I'd um, make some awesome video recipes for you guys to be able to make at home. Hope you're all fit and well and hopefully you find these videos educational and a bit of fun to get you into the kitchen cooking some yummy food. Our first recipe we're going to do today is pikelets which is a great um, kiwi snack. It can either be used for morning tea or afternoon tea and is great with some fresh jam or anything like that at home that you might have in your cupboard. Radio, let's get started. So what we're going to do is start off by sifting our dry ingredients. So we're going to start with our flour. So we need one and a half cups of plain flour. If you've got self-rising flour, that's fine as well. Self-rising flour has already got the baking powder already mixed into it, so that's great. But if you're using self just plain flour, you need to remember to use a baking powder. So we need one teaspoon of baking powder. We're just going to give that a quick sieve. Just gets rid of any lumps in our flour so we get a nice smooth batter when we're doing our pikelets and frying them. Most of my students will probably remember them as flour bombs, I call them in classroom. It's nothing that we want because when you bite into them they're not very nice to eat. To that we're going to add a tablespoon, two tablespoons of sugar and just give that a light little stir. We need to season our mix as well so a good pinch of salt onto your hands into the bowl usually it's over your shoulder but just be aware if anyone's behind you because you don't want to get salt in your friend's eyes next part we're going to do is we're going to crack an egg into it that can go into there use your fingers to pull it apart try not get any shell in it melted butter that goes in might need to use a, a spatula to get all of it out and the last little part we're going to add is our milk. So we need one and a quarter cups of milk. So I've got one large cup here. Fill it right up to the top. Pour it in. Then we've got our wee red one here, which is a quarter of a cup. Pour that in. Now we're just going to try and break up the egg and stir in all our ingredients. Fold it all in. Try and break up the egg. We want a nice smooth batter. A nice smooth batter will give us some beautiful pikelets as well. As you can see, there's quite some few lumps in there. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to scrape down our spoon, scrape down our bowl, and then we are going to add our whisk and just whisk. A fork will do if you don't have a whisk at home. A fork's perfectly fine. Give that a really good mix. Try and break up all the lumps. Give it a good tap so we get all the ingredients off. And then scrape down our bowl. And that is our batter. As you can see it's quite thick. Perfect consistency to make some beautiful nice pikelets. Now we're going to move over to our oven stove top. Where I'm going to show you how to fry. Does that move you up? Come for a walk. So here on our stove top is what we have is our element. As you can see I'm using gas. Electric is perfectly fine as well. I've got it on a very very low uh, setting at the moment. It's just constantly warming up. One way to check to see if it's nice and hot is either to A, have your hand rest over the top and feel the heat or just a little bit of water as well. Now the technique of making pikelets is to control the heat. So if it gets too hot, all you have to do is simply do is move it off the heat, sing happy birthday a couple of times, let your pan cool down, and then bring it back. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to start off just with a little bit of butter. This will just help give the pan a little bit of flavour and also make it non-stick as well. Move that around. So we want all the butter to get into the corners of our pans. If you have paper towels, it's great as well. You just wash, rub it out with paper towels. Melt it all in. It's just going to help give your pan some flavour and also give it a nice non-stick texture. Alright, keep this to the side as well because you'll be able to use it again. 
Now when you're making pikelets, it's all about consistency sizing. So I'm using a quarter of a cup measuring cup, or you can use a third of a cup if you want to. And all we do is straight into the middle of our pan. If you want to make them bigger like pikelets, or pancakes, sorry, then just use a bigger measuring cup. And what we're going to do is we'll see that our pikelet will start to form beautiful bubbles on top and that's where we know that the underside is cooked so that's where we want to bring or turn them over so hopefully if I bring you a little bit closer you'll be able to see the texture of it so it's just about monitoring the heat heat control is a big thing when you're frying especially when you're doing pikelets pancakes especially when you're on a stove top like this where it's got um, gas electric's not too bad but um, gas is quite a little bit more complicated so just remember my tips if it feels like the pan's getting too hot just remove it from the heat and bring it back. Sing happy birthday in your head just like you would if you are washing your hands and then we'll be able to um, bring it back onto the heat, bring it back up to heat, make sure you wipe some butter in it and then start again. What you're looking for is a nice constant colour on your pa uh, pikelets. If it looks like it's either a little bit light on one side or a little bit too dark on some sides on, on the outside that means we've not got right consistency in our heat. So what we're going to do is just going to, firstly your first pikelet is always your tester to see if we can get it right or not. So we want to make sure that we can get underneath it using a spatula or a fish slice, move it around. This is a great thing that you could do with younger siblings and stuff like that, getting them. It's a great way to learn measuring skills and some lifelong skills of cooking as well. And pikelets are really, really nice. My boys absolutely love them. So just get it moving around so it helps it non-stick. You start to see some bubbles forming on it around here, so that means the underside is starting to get cooked. So if we flip it over, we're just looking for a nice colour. So by looking at that one now, I can see it hasn't got great colour, so I need to know, I need to turn up my pan. Your first pikelet's always a taste tester or a tester to see if you got your pan right or your temperature right, so we might need to crank it up a little bit. While it's cooking, you want to keep your pikelet's nice and warm as well. So what I've got over here is a cooling rack and a nice warm tea towel, clean tea towel. And what you want to do after you cook them is just convert them from your pan onto your tea towel, cover them up, and then we'll be able to um, restart again. So that one's not looking too bad, so we're going to convert that out of our pan onto our cooling rack with our tea towel. And then we grab our batter and we start again. Right into the middle of the pan. If you've got a big pan or a big skillet and stuff like that, you can do two at once. But at the moment, it's just about, just take your time. One person can do the putting into the pan while the other person is using a spatula, then you can swap over. It's kind of like when you do dishes as well. Sometimes you've got to one person wash, one person dry, and then you both help each other out by working together to put your uh, all your equipment away and also your ingredients away. So once again, it's just about monitoring the temperature. Keep it nice and consistent. Once again, if it gets too hot, just move it off to the side and then bring it back. Just trying to monitor the heat on this one. Gas is a little bit harder. With your electric one, you can move it around from to different temperatures. So one, two, three, four, five, and six on an electric oven stovetop. Um, so you want to make sure you're looking at about five to start with and then you can either drop it down to four or three just to try and keep it constant. As the electric takes a little bit longer to warm up, again, when you're trying to reheat your pan, just take your time. It's not a race. It's just about having some fun in the kitchen and learning some skills. Now, I can see that on this one, I can hear it as well, that this one's cooking a lot faster and the bubbles are forming a lot faster as well. So that means I've almost got my temperature right, but I think it might be a little bit too high, so I'm just going to turn it down a bit. Let's we'll see if we can get this one moving around a bit. As you can see, there's some nice bubbles forming on top, so now we're going to flip it. And that's a better consistency. That's what your pikelets want to look like. Nice and golden brown on top. So once the one side goes down, it takes a lot longer. When you flip it, it only needs about 10 to 15 seconds on the other side because those bubbles are already starting to form. So we're already starting to cook those really, really well. And when you put them into your tea towel here, it keeps them nice and warm as well. Whenever you're cooking anything, remember it's reached the temperature, so it's all still cooking while you take it off the heat. Once again, we just need to make sure that we just wipe out our pan, return the butter to there so it gets a nice color on there or some non-stick liquid, and then we're gonna pour it on again. 
This one's a little bit bigger. Just give it a bit of a shake. We're just going to start to move it around, working on our consistency, working on our heat control, which is a major factor when you're cooking. Just waiting for those bubbles to form. Put your hand over top if you can feel it. There's a lot of heat coming off. It's really quite good. So I was snicking one of my pikelets. So I can see there's a lot of smoke coming off this, almost a bit, a bit too much. So I know that I need to take it off the heat just to make sure that we let it cool down. Once again, I just need to monitor my, my heat control coming through. The electric's a little bit different. Don't forget the good old jam. We'll flip it over. And once again, it's a real nice color. And once again, it only takes about 10 to 15 seconds on the other side, just to make sure that we've got that beautiful color. Always use a tea towel, keeps them nice and warm when you come along with the butter and jam. Makes it nice and flavorsome as well. I always, I always make sure that I put butter them before I put jam on you guys might just want to put jam on them, but great flavor. Have a try at this, it's really cool. It's a great way to get everyone cooking in the family, even making sure that you're helping out your whanau and stuff. And I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll be coming back with another video very, very shortly. Remember, take care, look after each other, and stay safe. Mr. D signing off.